We've all played popular FPS games like Counter-Strike or Call of Duty or even Apex Legends. But for every massive hit game, there's hundreds if not thousands that were never able to break above the surface. Games that were quite literally forgotten and buried by the Steam algorithm, fated never to see the light of day ever again. Today, I want to explore some of those most dead FPS games that even the algorithm forgot about. I want to find out why these games never surfaced. Were they just terrible to begin with? Or did some deserve better? This is called Entity The Black Day. Now this one has a grand total of 29 reviews with an all-time peak of four players seven months ago. In the last 30 days, there were zero, well, <laughs> one player, uh, me. I think the Steam algorithm would have forever buried this one if it wasn't for Big Fry, a YouTuber who covered Entity a few months ago, which is how I myself found this game. What is really interesting though, was the dev who made it, Ali, actually commented and responded to the video. I feel saddened after hearing your opinion about this game. It's not as bad as you just Described it. I developed the game on my own from scratch and it took three challenging years of work even without funding. The game is not complete. It is just an early access version released in the hope that some sales might help me complete it. My financial situation is pushing me to quit developing it and retire. Now honestly at a glance, the game doesn't look bad by any means. In fact, I would argue it looks pretty nice and if anything else, the graphics look pretty incredible for a solo dev. And as far as that from scratch vibe that Ali's talking about, this game certainly has it because the game's tutorial is probably one of the most unique tutorials I've seen in a while. If you look up to the right of the screen, you will find a great heart and pulse. This will be my energy and health. I think this is enough for now. If you need anything, <laughs> I love the. I will talk to you I love the, the hand waves. And if you forget anything about the controls, you can always return anytime to the mina. Now, let's go. Oh, great. I didn't really catch a lot of that. The game itself sets you in this underground labyrinth that was absolutely infested and covered with some sort of alien monster goo. There were different monsters that spawned and of course, exploding spider eggs, which I kept running into. Oh, go again. oh my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't, I didn't see I didn't see it. To progress through the different levels, there was the usual puzzle solving of finding or connecting pieces to unlock certain parts of a console, which would open doors, and of course, more egg bombs. Which by the way, I found out if you step on enough can trigger this pretty interesting death screen. What is this? This is kind of cool, but uh... Okay, we're gonna skip that. Entity The Black Day describes itself, at least according to the Steam description, as taking place in a world of dreams. You will not feel bored because each level contains a new character, a new environment, a new style of play, and new challenges. Hmm. Maybe I'm off base here, but I feel like I played through multiple levels and I only got to play the military commander guy. I'm assuming that there'll be more content added as Ali ramps up development for his August 2024 release date. But as far as a new style of play, there was definitely a cool moment where I got a flamethrower and the game went to a first person mode, which Honestly, I kind of really preferred it over the third person view mode. The monsters look pretty detailed and I'll be up front. I'm yeah. pretty impressed that this was all done by one dev. Definitely better than anything I could have done on my own. The reviews on Steam, at least the English ones, seem pretty positive and supportive. And while I do think there's a lot to improve on with Entity, I do hope the algorithm gobs are kind to Ali once he finishes this game and pushes it to an audience that he deserves. Anyway, sadly, I couldn't get further in the game because uh, the game ended up freezing up during a cutscene and... <sighs> what do I do here? Did my game get stuck? I think I'm stuck, guys. I think that might be it. This is No Sun to Worship. It's $7.99 on Steam and was released in September of 2023, where it had a small burst of 23 concurrent players, but otherwise hovers at around three to four players, checking out the game every month, which isn't too bad. Now the opening right out of the gate seems incredible. The voice acting was pretty dope with an interesting premise for sure. And I was immediately sucked in with so many questions. This what is really cool. What man that we decided to kill ourselves so we could punish our equals? You can do what is Whoa. right. That is why you are 
Now this game was made by a solo dev named Antonio Freire. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, who honestly looks like just the nicest dude ever. He's made a bunch of other games on Steam as well, apparently, and is pretty active on socials. While I went to No Sun to Worship Blind, upon further research after the fact, I can see that it was really meant to be more of a stealth shooter, sort of like Metal Gear or Splinter Cell. Now, the mission in the game was to go to all the prisoners and unalive them in each map, while avoiding getting swarmed by guards. Given my FPS background though, this game was uh, super easy and every enemy died in one headshot and... Oh... Oh no... No! As you go through more of the levels, things only get worse. There's more guards, way less ammo, and more targets to track down, which means you really gotta be more patient with how you creep through the different maps. Oh, Jesus. Hey, I... <laughs> By the fourth level, ammo was so limited that I literally had to avoid killing guards altogether and that's when the true nature of this game revealed itself to me. I really got to slow down and appreciate the art style and the overall vibe of what Antonio was going for. I think there probably could have been more to the storytelling, especially with that super strong intro sequence. In the three to four missions I played through, and I think there's only six missions, there wasn't much in the way of an overarching narrative that I think would have really sucked me into the universe and kept me wanting to keep progressing. If you go to the Steam page for the game, it says, unravel the mystery of no sun to worship. Who are you? Who are you unaliving and why? Pay attention to the symbolism and messaging. I mean, hey, maybe I have brain rot from enjoying MCU movies and Netflix because the uh, symbolism and messaging was definitely lost on me. So if there's any piece of feedback I could give, I think uh, no sun to worship would benefit greatly by explicitly including bits of story and lore within each mission. Well, I think No Sun to Worship might be a bit more niche in terms of shooters, I still definitely think it deserves a second chance with the Steam algorithm and getting more traction and people on board with it. I would have loved to dedicate more time to finishing this one, but... So this is Bloodhound, and it's it's a vibe. Seriously, it might be my favorite game on this list so far. The music is just mm, so good. This one definitely got buried hard by the Steam algorithm, peaking only to 39 concurrents back in July of 2023 when it came out, and with about an average of two to three people checking out the game within the last 24 hours at the time of recording. This one goes for $13 on Steam, but I've seen the price go down to as low as $3.89 with Steam promotions. <laughs> That's awesome. The only piece of feedback I'll give is if the music can kind of go on even in the downtime. So good. Bloodhound feels great to play. I'm not sure if it's the amazing music or the simplicity of the gunplay, but it gives off some retro Doom vibes with a bit of that indie flair. Speaking of indie, I did some digging on the dev studio and they're called Kruger and Flint Production, a small studio based out of Poland. I'm not exactly sure who Kruger and Flint are because looking at their staff page, no one has that name. I also looked into the band that collaborated for the music. They're called Sons of Amon, and I never was one for metal, but holy cow, their stuff is just incredible. I truly think their music added a lot for this game. Bloodhound has a usual mix of gaining new abilities, new weaponry, bosses, and levels to fight through. There's even a grapple dual shotgun, a lot like the super shotgun from Doom Eternal. Oh, this, this is like Doom. They're very, very strong though. Ladies, ladies. One at a time. Oh, and demon boobas. Tons of demon boobas. What the? What is going on here, lady? Overall, Bloodhound was a blast to play. The Steam reviews were mixed. And honestly, I disagree with a lot of negative ones. I hope one day the algorithm gods are kind to it and surfaces the game to more people because honestly, Bloodhound deserves way more. Cool game. This is really cool. But it's time to move on to other games. Can they live up to Bloodhound? Well, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> What are we looking at? You don't want to know how I found this one. By now, we're going pretty deep in the Steam library. So deep, in fact, I think the algorithm has truly forgotten about this one. I'm pretty sure Shooter Game was just a class project done by some student learning how to make their first video game, but 
then why does it cost $15 to buy on Steam? Huh? At $15, it's actually the most expensive game on this list. So I tried to find if there was something I was missing here with this price tag. And so I loaded into my first game. Am I doing it right? Yeah, this sense. Oh, how come you get a gun and I get a bow and arrow? Grappling hook. The grappling hook is really jarring. Did I get him? Oh my god, it's so fast. It, it is like instant. <laughs> yeah, I'm not exactly sure what this is. And when I was playing this, I was starting to wonder if I had gone far too deep into the rabbit hole. Perhaps this one's better off being buried well below the surface because for a $15 game, I don't even know what to say. I don't want to be too mean because granted, this came out in 2016, made by someone called Anaz. There's not much about Anaz on Google that I could see. And it was probably just some kid who made this a long time ago and had forgotten about it. Do you dare? Yeah? <laughs> Am I playing right now? No one plays this game. I mean, the all-time peak it got was six years ago, and it's four concurrent players. Funny enough, there are actually some reviews about this game. One commenter wrote, Sweet Jesus, this game is a mess. The lighting makes me feel like I'm going to have a seizure, and this game is just broken to all hell. Another reviewer actually noticed that shooter game was literally comprised of Unreal Engine tutorial assets that some idiot is charging $15 for. Next up, we have a game called Hold Your Houses, which is a kind of a cute name. This one is made by someone called Wackaki Games, who according to Steam has made quite a number of games already. Have you ever been to a robbery and didn't have weapons to defend yourself and your house? Well, now you can. With Hold Your Houses, you have a variety of weapons to use to help you defend yourself, your house, and take on those unwanted robbers. 83 mostly negative reviews. God, this must be brutal. By now, we're doing some truly deep diving into the Steam library. Now, the settings were super minimal, and after some trouble getting the game to go full screen... Ah, it's just sort of like, oh my god! Jesus Christ! Shoddy sounds kind of nice, but I'm gonna build. Oh my... Dude, he just comes out of... These people just come out of nowhere. Who are these people? Stop! Yeah, so this is a game. There's a building aspect to it, but the enemies spawn in so fast with zero audio, and uh, it doesn't really let you prepare. Reading the reviews, people mostly shared my thoughts, with one person calling it a polished turd, and another giving it the Golden Turd Award for 2017. But funny enough, you scroll down far enough, there's a couple of people who enjoy the game. Like this guy who states, When I play this game, I like to act like the government are trying to steal my aliens I stole from them, which makes me win every time and keeps me going in life. Oh boy. Oh! Jesus Christ. This is Deathly Stillness. The story behind it is actually very, very interesting. On the Steam page, the developer, who I assume is Chinese, has stated, this is a boring zombie game with no plot, not an officially released game, please don't have high expectations. But it almost has 20,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews? What? Now, if you go over to YouTube, this game actually has got a quite a bit of attention, with a few videos hitting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. I clicked around and came across Call Me Kevin's video, and in the comments, I see that the dev himself actually commented. Clicking on Jia Chen's YouTube page, it looks like the guy is still somewhat working on the game, with regular update videos being published. Now, I didn't play all the maps, but it would seem that most of the maps play out as a zombie shooter with some sort of end boss. In the background here, I'm going through the Chinese market map, and I gotta say, the graphics, the gunplay, sound effects sound pretty decent, especially since it was made by one person. And the shooting here does not feel bad. This is a lot better than a lot of the games I played. Now, zombies are pretty straightforward to eliminate, but it wasn't long before I triggered the boss battle. And let's just say it was interesting. Uh oh. Uh oh. The boss wasn't too complicated to take down, but kind of creepy enough to give me the heebie jeebies. It's called a Jiangxi, which is like a uh, Chinese equivalent of a zombie or vampire. I remember when I was really young, my dad would tell me stories of movies he'd watch when he was a kid about these Chinese zombies that would hop around awkwardly with their arms outstretched. I had completely forgotten about this until I played this game, so it's funny to see that kind of folklore here. I really, what I really want to check out is. Uh, backrooms map because I think this is new. What? Why am I first person? Do I have a gun? Am I a zombie? 
Oh, I see, I see, I see. It's supposed to be like, ah, glitched into the back room. Dude, that's great. Dude, this is creepy. I, I have a pretty decent sense of direction, but I am slowly losing track. I said there's a sound. There's a sound that I that will play as I get closer to the... Uh... Okay, I hear some roaring. Find wall to... Yeah, is this the wall? Dude... I'm not ready for jump scares. I am so not ready for jump scares. Now the backrooms map was completely different than the other map I just played. And honestly, it was creepy as all hell. In my previous video, I played Escape the Backrooms, which was a pretty decent backrooms game. But this, for some reason, this just felt way more maze-like and infinite and creepy. I'm so not ready. Oh, Jesus Christ, what was that? Entity bacteria can't be destroyed for you. Is that the bacteria? Oh boy. I don't like this. <laughs> Dude, it's I, I can't be doing this. Eventually I was able to find the hidden glitch room which led me to a lab lady who sent me out to find some zombie blood. Now these zombies are a little bit different than the zombies in the Chinese market and they are different than the crazy bacteria entity that I came across earlier. It was pretty freaky trying to track down all the zombies without getting caught by the entity but after a bit I was able to progress through the story and we were on our way to escape the back rooms. We were eventually able to get towards the exit but I had to fend off waves and waves of zombies. Luckily this time I had an AK Okay, so mowing down the mobs wasn't too hard. What's super fascinating about Deathly Stillness is with all the media attention and reviews, it only ever peaked at 1182 concurrent players on Steam three years ago. Nevertheless, it still has people coming on and checking it out every day, bouncing between 75 to 160 concurrents daily. That's pretty good considering that this was not really supposed to be a complete game. And even though many, and I mean many of the 20,000 reviews were talking about the booba options, I do hope that Steam surfaces this game a bit more to a broader audience, especially given how polished it was for a free solo dev indie game. Oh, I'm just trying to loot. Yeah, here. Road to Vostok. Now, this one probably shouldn't be on this list because I would argue it was never really forgotten by the algorithm. But I want to include it because it's one of those games that, you know, I would hear about, but then it would disappear, then I'll hear about it again months later. The game itself received a ton of attention, covered by various YouTubers over the past year. And I can see why. I, I love these, like, realistic, quote unquote, survival. Daisy, you know, kind of aesthetic. It's it's nice. Yeah, this game is gorgeous. I was running it at a super smooth 240 FPS and everything just looks so nice and sharp. Reading the Steam page of the demo version of the game, it seems that it was really meant to be a single player PvE experience with a possible co-op mode being added later. In the about this game section, there's a very clear vision for what this game is supposed to be with a lot of hardcore survival and weapon mechanics, looting, trading, and a lot like Tarkov, maps that are based on real world locations. Locations. In my short time with the game, I explored the three areas that I could, and it was overall a really good time. I think for this game to really take the FPS world by storm, some form of PvP is 100% needed. I love the aesthetic and how beautiful the game is, so I really hope the Steam algorithm is kind to it when it releases and pushes this game out to a ton of people who love this kind of realistic shooter. So we've explored quite a few FPS games that may or may not have been buried within the deaths of the Steam algorithm. Most of these are dead, most weren't completed games, but some, I would say, deserve a second chance. If you guys enjoyed the content, check out this video where I tried a $1 million horror game.